All right, we are continuing to discuss our series on rivets, welding, and bonding. And today we're going to talk about, or in this video, we're going to be talking about um, some different weld types. Okay. And the first type that we're going to talk about is the CJP butt weld. And um, CJP stands for complete joint penetration. And it's a butt weld. So in this weld, we have two pieces of material that may have an edge prep like this and they have a complete uh, weld between the joints okay so this is the weld here um, this type of weld here is called a groove weld um, and there is really only um, <clears throat> two types of welds um, or five types or four types there's two main types and so there's two main weld types and these are the groove welds And the other one is the fillet welds. <clears throat> Groove welds are where we have two materials. There may be a, like a complete butt weld. There's no groove. We could have an angle taper here um, for a, a partial joint weld. We can have a full taper for a um, complete joint weld. We can have one material that looks like this, and we'll go over more of these in a little bit of detail later, and that can have a cutout like that. Um, but these are groove welds. Uh, fillet welds are um, welds between plates. So they might look like something like this, uh, where the weld is here. Say fillet weld, or maybe here, where the weld is um, between the two sides. Um, we also have uh, like fill fill type welds, and these are your uh, plug and fillet. I'm sorry. Uh, plug in slot or plug in slot weld. So some people say there's two types of welds. Um, the groove and fillet, some people say that there's um, four types of welds if they include plug in slot. Some people include plug slash slot as a type of weld. Anyway, um, so we have uh, CJP welds, the complete joint penetration. We have partial um, joint penetration or PJP welds, partial joint penetration. Okay, and that would be something like this, where you have a taper in the edge that would be prepared beforehand before you do the weld. And then you would <clears throat> fill the weld here so this would be your weld and in this case you have um, part of the material here that's not welded and then you have the material here that's welded and this region right here this distance is important and it's called the throat and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute 
So that's what the partial joint weld looks like. Uh, the fillet weld is um, this type of weld here that we showed. That's where you have uh, like two plates. Just draw it again. Okay, this is your fillet weld. And in this case, uh, the weld goes here. And what's important for this type of weld is actually this length. Okay, we'll talk more about that. Because if you look at how the plates want to um, separate, this is the uh, shear plane that they would want to separate, which kind of goes to the middle of that weld. We'll talk more about that later. Um, then we have the uh, plug weld. <clears throat> so plug weld um, is just where you have your work pieces and inside of the work piece there's some holes and if you have like holes like this that you'd have as a weld then you would fill them uh, with the weld this would be your weld and this is a plug weld and if the plug is bigger than little a little circle that looks something like this then this would be like a slot weld so if you were to weld here weld that this is a slot weld so those are your main uh, weld types you have the complete joint penetration CJP partial joint penetration um, that's defined by the way that these joints uh, how much of the joint is welded then we have our fillet weld um, which may, which is the most common type of weld that you'd see and then we have the uh, plug weld and the slot weld so those are our weld types and we can also take a look at the different joint types so those are the weld types and these are our joint types okay <clears throat> so the joint types are uh, butt joint so this would be a um, this would be a butt joint that's welded on both sides here okay so if that's the butt joint then this is the weld so the weld would be here and let's say it's welded on both sides and then we'd have a nice weld zone here this is your butt weld because these two articles are uh, butted together it's your butt weld the next type is the corner and in this case there may be some sort of uh, edge prep as well maybe even for both uh, sides of the material <clears throat> excuse me and this was where your your weld would go here and maybe here do a fillet weld on the back side this would be your corner weld or your corner joint then we have our edge an edge could look something like this where you have your two work pieces they go down like this and you'd have your weld in the middle okay and this type of weld is your edge weld or your edge joint then we have the next type which would be the T joint in this case you have your weld 
that would be a fillet weld here. I'll go down and fill up that joint. And this is your T joint. And then the last type is your lap joint, which we showed just a second ago. It's not a very straight line. Okay. In this case, your weld would go here and here all the way down. And this is your lap joint. So you can have a butt joint, corner joint, edge joint, T joint, and lap joint with uh, a complete joint penetration, partial joint penetration, fillet weld, slaughter plug welds. So those are our weld types and our joint types. Um, what's important to note is the throat uh, and that is the um, the critical um, length for determining stresses. And the throat, which is usually denoted by lowercase t, the throat is different for the different types of weld. So if we have um, a uh, complete joint penetration, uh, even though we have the weld that can go out like this, the throat um, air, the throat dimension is this dimension here, which would be the distance from the top of the material to the bottom of the material. This is your throat. It's In this case, it's the same distance for a uh, CJP weld. For a complete joint penetration weld, it's the same distance. So T is the same as the plate thickness in this case. Okay. If we have partial joint penetration, say something like this, then the throat is the distance to the top from to the to the what would be the top of the surface if the surface was extended over to where the joints first intersect, that would be the throat. Okay, and maybe it'd be a little bit easier if I use a different color. So this distance here would be the throat. And the reason that we use this distance is because what we're trying to do is look at the critical dimension for shear. So if we had a load here and a load here on these two plates, then those forces would act on this area that's defined by that throat uh, length and we don't we don't use the entire weld which means that this is a more conservative dimension um, to use and in the same case up here if we had a force that wanted to shear we use this throat uh, dimension times the length that would be our the shear area that that acts over and, and it's important for doing the analysis for um, different welds. Uh, there's also something uh, related to this okay this is our PJP weld T okay in this case it's smaller than the plate thickness. Um, there's this concept of uh, efficiency, not only in welds, 
but um, sorry, concept of efficiency in welds, but it's also in other joints uh, such as rivets. And this concept of efficiency basically takes a look at um, the uh, joined. So the efficiency is the the joined um, surfaces versus if they were continuous or a continuous plate. So this would be like uh, the welded jointed surface in comparison if it was a solid piece of uh, metal um, not welded continuous con sorry continuous <clears throat> so that's the efficiency of the weld uh, and for complete joint penetration the efficiency is considered to be 100 percent and what that means is that if you weld a joint and you have complete joint penetration that that weld actually has the same strength or the same efficiency or the same ability to deal with a load as um, a material that that wasn't welded that's just a solid plate however and this is our caveat this is only for the static case okay joints that are welded have a lower fatigue life okay we'll talk more about that later but we're going to mention it now welding uh, or let's say welded joints have lower fatigue life in general okay that's how we treat welds okay they have a lower fatigue life in general and that's because of the nature of fatigue it occurs by crack propagation and welded joints make for uh, more opportunities for cracks to form and grow okay all right <clears throat> so um, there's different classifications of fillet welds so fillet weld classifications and this has to do with um, they are classified according to how they're loaded or to the loading condition um, and uh, they are parallel sorry I'm having trouble spelling today they are parallel and transverse those are the two loading conditions a parallel load looks like two plates See if we had two plates here and they were welded with the fillet weld on the side here and on the back side here and let's say that goes all the way down and then they were loaded uh, here and here on the bottom and top plate respectively this is a uh, fillet weld that's in parallel it has a parallel classification because the load is in um, shear versus the transverse and if we had the um, same uh, plate geometry where we have a plate on a plate 
transverse case would be when the welds are actually in a slightly in the rotated 90 degrees. So it'd be here. And let's say here. Okay. And if we had the loading condition the same as before. Then um, this is in transverse, or this is transverse. Okay, and the dis di difference is this is pushing with the welds on the sides, and this is pushing through the welds. Uh, another example is if we had a, a plate on a plate. With a weld all around. So we have a plate on a, another plate with a weld all around. So in this case, we have a weld on all four sides. And we loaded it like this. Then these are in the transverse. Uh, these are transverse loads. These are um, shear loads. So I want to make a point here. Uh, just to make it clear, the reason that we call this shear is we have this section in the weld and then we have the throat here. And that throat area, if we were to take a look at it on that fillet weld, looks something like this. Let me just change the color. <clears throat> So if we have a weld, if we have a fillet weld, and that fillet weld has a weld bead that looks like this, and it goes down <clears throat> the length of whatever it is here, this distance here is the, is the throat of the weld. This part here is called the toe. And this height here is called the leg. If the weld uh, root this is the root here. It's the root. If from the root to the top of the weld distance is equal from the root to the toe, if they're equal, then that's also H. They're not always equal. And that's called the leg. So the H is the leg of the weld. T is the throat of the weld. And if they're equal, then, then uh, T is 0 0.707 times H. And if you go up here, then if you look at these welds again, and you look at this loading condition, you see that um, this here, right here, is the throat. If it goes, if we follow it down, the throat times the length, that's the that's the area that this load is acting on. I don't know if I'm doing a very good job or not, if that's hard to see, but that would be this area. If you look down here, that's the area that the axon, <clears throat> that's why we say that's in shear. If you look at that same area over here, that 
that throat plane, if you would. The reason we call that transverse is because it's acting against that area. And in this case, you know, if we have the down here on the bottom, if we have that that throat plane times that length, then if it's acting in a compressive manner to that plane or a tensile manner to that plane, uh, we um, <clears throat> we have a transverse um, in this, and we can have also you know a shear as well. But we say that this is a transverse fillet weld, this is a shear fillet weld. And it may not be obvious just by looking at it, but I think if you imagine the uh, the throat plane, then it's a little bit easier to see how this would be loaded in shear and how this would be a transverse load. So we use this throat um, area and the throat area is defined, let's say here, we have a weld like this, <clears throat> and I'm going to just blow this up. Let's say we have this type of uh, weld, and it goes down. This perpendicular bisector, if we call this H1, and H2, H1 and H2, and this is T, this distance here is T, that's the throat, and the throat area is the throat, which is this dimension, times the length, L. So if I take that all the way down, we multiply it by L, it defines this area. Okay, and you can kind of see that if we use this area and we uh, were to load these plates relative to one another, then the shear stress that would act would act on this area. So that's the area that we use in our stress calculations. It is a simplification because obviously the weld dynamics and the relative heights um, and um, those details can would greatly would would affect the actual loads. But for engineering design, we use this throat um, variable here and this throat area. So A is the throat area, and that's the throat times the length of the weld. And that's what we use um, for calculations. And if H1, for stress calculations, if H1 is equal to H2, um, then we can say that T is 0 0.707 times H1 or H2, or just call it H. If um, for plates, plates that are greater than six millimeters, a leg height of three millimeters is used. So it would be greater than, greater than, or equal to three millimeters. For plates that are greater than 15 millimeters, we would use a uh, leg height, and that's the height of the weld, of greater than, sorry, if plates are greater than 150 millimeters thick, then we would use a leg height of 15 millimeters or more. All right. So that concludes the different types of welds and joints and how we get the areas that are used for uh, stress analysis and design.
The next thing we'll do is go over some examples. So this is um, where to find more information and you can find more information in the machinery's handbook about welds. Um, if you're doing engineering drawings and you choose to use um, uh, welding for your design, you can use the American Welding Society uh, standards and um, they have defined a way of calling out the weld. This would be a weld um, uh, symbol for uh, engineering drawing. Um, the arrow uh, would point to where you would want to do the welding. Um, the arrow side um, is the side that it's pointed at and that's the that would be the um, arrow side of the call out and then the opposite side would be the opposite side of the weld and things that are called out in the weld are the um, the depth of penetration the effective throat uh, and a lot of other different uh, weld features um, the length of the weld, the pitch between center to center, spacing of welds, if you're not going to weld continuously, um, those can all be contained in these uh, weld symbols. And uh, there's some examples in here that are useful. Um, these are the uh, groove weld symbols. Uh, you notice they look at kind of how the two materials are coming together. So this would be like one side, this would be the other side. Um, and then we have some other weld symbols. Um, and some additional weld symbols. And then we have some examples uh, that you can look up. So this is a the weld symbol for a fillet weld. This would be on a drawing, for example. Um, this would be a square groove weld on the other side of the joint because it's not on the arrow side. So if it was pointing here and that was this side of the joint, the groove, uh, the square groove weld would be on the other side of the joint because it's not on the arrow side of the joint. Um, and here's just some examples of different uh, weld symbols. This is a plug weld on the arrow side of the joint. So it would be on this face, it would be on the front face of the joint, plug weld. Okay. This is a single pass back weld. So, okay, so this is this would be the arrow side of the joint. And that's the groove side on the arrow side. So that's why there's the groove weld on the arrow side. And then this is the back weld symbol, and that's on the other side, so that would be the other side of the joint. So that's how you would look at the uh, different weld uh, symbols and in this case this is the height uh, down here and the second to last one you have a half inch uh, fillet weld on the arrow side and a quarter inch fillet weld on the other side and that is the leg dimension so you can see here uh, in the actual welded uh, component you see how that arrow call out is is um, is specified and then there's some more these are some examples so you can look at the machinery's handbook if you're working on some drawings to try to at least draw the weld symbol um, appropriately